Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and once again, it is time for my client Doug's vlog. And we started the week off with a very, very hard exercise. Uh, hard enough that he lost 50 pounds off his max on the primary movement. Because he's benched 355, we took that cambered bar, right? Because he has to go two inches deeper, and with that neutral grip, and all of a sudden, drop down to 305, and he's like, yeah, that was close to a max I stopped there. Uh, so, again, that deeper, deeper stretch really took a lot out for him. Uh, and that's usually what you see with guys like this who have a bit shorter arms who are built to bench because he benches double his body weight, uh, who struggle with the deadlift. A lot of times we see that. You guys have seen the same thing in the past with Mike when I had him take a, a buffalo bar and bench. It's just like, he's like, dude, I lost like 30, 40 pounds off of it. I can't do that. Whereas in with me, I don't really lose much of anything, right? I'm usually like five pounds, 10 pounds within my max. Uh, or, or right at a similar number when I use that same bar because I'm a longer arm uh, guy and I'm used to moving the weight a longer distance. So it just kind of shows you how these different bars uh, can impact the, the force production and the levers depending upon how you're built. It's just interesting to note. So for supplemental work on this day, we did floor presses. Uh, we did incline bench. We do uh, uh, dumbbell rows, laterals, uh, JM presses. Uh, and some of the footage is, isn't put in the first one. I'll include some of the, the laterals and the other rows uh, in, in the dynamic day. Because I have his stuff fairly consistent right now. I don't have a, a large deviation for Doug between his uh, max effort dynamic effort days. So on max effort lower, we did a safety bar squat. He got 422. All right, we're up there on the safety bar as, as good as he did at this first meet. All right, he did his first meet back in December. Uh, we've got more planned. He wants to get on the platform more often. Uh, we're going to get him back on the platform this year. We're going to try to get him to a national level event uh, with one or two federations. Uh, we, we, we're going to look kind of play it by ear with which one we want to try to get him to nationals at. Uh, but he can qualify in any fed right now for his weight class. And the people are like, really, with, the, with his squat and deadlift? I'm like, yeah, because he's not that heavy. Like, Doug walks around about 175, 178. You know, so we're, we took him into the 181 with no water cuts. And we think we're going to stick that out and maybe just bulk him a little more. Let's put on another couple pounds of muscle, right? And just walk into that, that 181 more comfortable. And again, keeping in mind, we've never done water cuts or anything with him. We can save that for later. Uh, but for supplemental work on max effort uh, lower day, we're doing Romanian deadlifts now. We're doing uh, safety bar split squats, uh, reverse hypers, and pull-ups. So a lot of people would say, why the RDL instead of the good morning? You push good mornings all the time. I do, but sometimes you guys see me in the past and clients of mine doing RDLs. So why in his specific case? Because he can squat almost as much as he deadlifts. His deadlift is, is his weak link. He's not built to deadlift. We have always struggled with the deadlifts. Like our dream is to eventually get him to a 500 deadlift. Now that's funny. People will say, well, that's kind of funny because these guys going to end up benching 400. I know. I know. And he may be one of the guys who's, who's benching 400 while squatting and pulling 500. Okay. He, again, there's not a big disparity for him between squats and deadlifts. And it has to do with some, some historical injuries and stuff. His, his low back used to be a real problem. Uh, we're prone to hamstring injuries, things like that for him. So the RDLs are there to uh, be a deadlift accessory, right? So usually the way I look at an RDL versus a good morning, yes, we could look at the different bars on the good morning, the styles. We could look at the, the muscles involved between the two because they're fairly similar. And that may be a reason that we pick something. But in his case, the RDL is a better deadlift accessory and the good morning is a better squat accessory. And it's not to say that both don't have carryover to both lifts because they do. But simply put, he's a much stronger squatter than he is puller. Therefore, I want to emphasize pulling a little bit more with that accessory slot for the posterior chain. All right, pretty straightforward. All right, dynamic effort upper day, which you guys are watching. Uh, speed benching, incline bench, uh, dumbbell rows, lateral raises, JM presses, band press downs. 
Uh, and as you guys can see, Doug is pretty lean, a reasonably lean guy. Uh, again, another reason why why he's benching double body weight. You know, you look at someone like that and go, well, how's this guy benching double his body weight? And you're talking about getting him up to 400, you know, which is maybe something like uh, two and a half times body weight. Yeah, it, we'll probably get him there. He's a lean, that's one reason. Uh, again, he's good at getting leaner. He stays relatively lean even when bulking. Like, we just bulked. For those who, who are asking, is he bulking or cutting, we bulked into this last meet. That meet was a month ago. Hey, this is on the end of a bulk. So this is, for Doug, this is fat. This is bulked up. So when you look at it from that perspective, leaner guy, shorter arms, of course he's a good bencher. He's got a lot of upper body muscle mass and he's lean with good levers. Okay, of course he's got a good bench press, that's why. Um, as we can see there though, some of these give us an idea, really we need a little more pec. All right, he's got really strong delts. Uh, you guys have seen him put up, what did we put up? So the 325 incline bench last month. I showed him bench, incline benching, 30 degree incline, 325. He has delts for days. Hey, that's one reason he looks really jacked at his body weight. And people are like, what do you mean he's in the 170s? Not even water cutting down. It's like, well, he's lean with big delts, so he's going to look big. And that's kind of a point I, I make to a lot of people. They bring up the, the you know, thing of aesthetics. Well, yeah, there's an enormous genetic component. Some of us are not built to look pretty, <clears throat> myself included. We're, I'm not built for that. All right. But what you're doing, if your goal is to have a look, probably the best thing you could do is just get real lean and focus on your delts. In this case, we do do delt work. And we do a lot of incline work, too. He's always been good at the incline, and we hammer the incline. Same thing with all this other stuff, all these wide grip pull-ups. All right, think about all the rear delt and everything else involved there. All right, so we go hard on inclines, uh, these pull-ups, rows, but particularly pull-ups, some lateral raises. Okay, throw some lateral raises in to finish off the delts. Yeah, he's, he's big. He's going to look big at that body fat. All right. So we're finishing up here, of course, with dynamic effort uh, lower. So he did uh, safety bar box squats for speed. We do conventional speed pulls. I don't have him pull sumo anymore. It's just, it's a potential injury for him. His body doesn't agree with it. Uh, again, we do split squats, Romanian deadlifts, reverse hyper extensions. Always finish up with those reverse hypers. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys next time.